Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another captivating journey through the annals of history. Today, we're diving deep into the heart of a battlefield that witnessed the 24th Panzer Division in the harrowing tale of their fateful encounter in the crucible of Stalingrad. As the flames of conflict raged on, the 24th Panzer Division found themselves at the forefront of history's most intense battle. From the fierce urban warfare to the unforgiving winter cold, the 24th Panzer Division faced challenges that would test the mettle of even the best soldiers. This division was completely destroyed within Stalingrad. So, join us as we unravel the intricacies of their strategic decisions and the combat they encountered, the 24th Panzer Division. A significant military formation in World War II emerged on the historical stage in late 1941. Its origins trace back to the transformation of the 1st Cavalry Division, stationed in the strategic city of Königsberg. This conversion marked a pivotal shift in the division's structure and purpose, as it transitioned from its cavalry roots to become a formidable panzer unit. The decision to reshape the 1st Cavalry Division into the 24th Panzer Division was a response to the evolving demands of warfare during that tumultuous era. The lightning-fast pace of the German Blitzkrieg tactics underscored the importance of highly mobile and heavily armored units. The Panzer Divisions, with their tanks and mechanized infantry, epitomized this new approach to warfare, and the transformation was part of a broader effort to modernize the German military. Undergoing extensive reorganization and retraining, the 24th Panzer Division was equipped with tanks, artillery, and motorized infantry, allowing it to swiftly maneuver across the battlefield. Firstly, the 1st Cavalry Division, entry into the Northern Netherlands, was marked by a curious paradox, a convergence of historical context and military strategy. While this area may not have been deemed a focal point of strategic importance on the grand chessboard of war, its role in the unfolding narrative held implications that would ripple through the course of events. Following the surrender of the Dutch, the 1st Cavalry Division's role evolved within the larger context of the conflict. With the Dutch surrender, the division faced a turning point, preparing to shift its focus from one theater of operations to another. As the dust settled after the surrender, the division's troops geared up for the final phases of the Battle of France, which seamlessly led to a subsequent phase of their wartime involvement. The division's participation in the later stages of the Battle of France showcased its adaptability. The intensity of active combat gave way to more deliberate actions, with the division's soldiers engaging in urban warfare and dealing with shifting front lines. These concluding moments of the campaign highlighted the division's versatility, emphasizing its capacity to tackle various challenges. As an occupation force, the division had to balance maintaining order with responding to the needs of the occupied population. This role tested the division's ability to oversee both military and civil matters. Moving from occupied France, the division shifted its attention to Poland. This shift broadened its responsibilities, requiring it to manage various tasks as an occupying presence on Polish soil. In Poland, the division's presence played a role in a complex era where occupation and warfare intertwined. Its service illustrated the balance needed between military actions and governance, as it navigated the challenges of maintaining control and responding to the expectations of the local population. The division became actively engaged in the German invasion of the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa. During this campaign, it formed a component of the Army Group Center, contributing to the broader effort on the Eastern Front. As part of this group, the division played a role in the complex web of operations aimed at advancing into Soviet territory. After its involvement in the initial phases of Operation Barbarossa, the division's journey took a different direction. It was redeployed back to East Prussia, where it underwent a significant transformation. This marked the division's shift from its previous role to becoming the 24th Panzer Division. This conversion signaled a change in structure and purpose as the division transitioned from its previous composition to a tank division. The 24th Panzer Division's formation emerged as a response to the evolving needs of warfare on the Eastern Front. The armored capabilities of a tank division were deemed essential to navigate the vast and challenging terrain, as well as to counter the Soviet forces' resilience and adaptability. This conversion process was emblematic of the flexibility required to adapt to the ever-changing dynamics of a wartime environment. The division was then sent to northern France for training. Following its initial deployment in northern France, 
The division's focus shifted as it assumed new responsibilities in different theaters of operation. From June 1942 onwards, it found itself under the command of the 4th Panzer Army, which was part of Army Group South on the Eastern Front. The division played a significant role in the capture of Voronezh. As part of its involvement on the Eastern Front, the division contributed to the successful operation that resulted in the capture of this strategically important city. The division found itself at the forefront of intense combat. The city's significance lay not only in its geographical location, but also in its importance as a key transportation hub and a gateway to further advances eastward. Recognizing the strategic value of Voronezh, both sides understood that control of the city could have far-reaching implications for the course of the war. The 24th Panzer Division showcased their mobility and firepower as they engaged in a complex battle. Tank formations, mechanized infantry, and supporting artillery worked in tandem to breach defensive lines, navigate urban terrain, and engage in fluid combat scenarios. And on the 24th of July, 1942, the city was captured. But the division had no idea what lay ahead. As the Battle of Stalingrad commenced, the 24th Panzer Division takes a prominent role in the ongoing campaign. Positioned in the Dreieckswald, or Triangle Forest, the division becomes a linchpin in the German advance. Their efforts are particularly felt on September 4th, as they spearhead an assault on the southern suburbs of Stalingrad, pushing toward the Tsaritsa Gully in the north. Amidst the tumult of battle, there are moments of pause. On September 7th, Clashes temporarily cease to allow both sides to regroup and reassess their strategies. This breather is short-lived, as September 8th sees renewed action. The 24th Panzer Division charges forward, capturing the Sadovaya Station to the north and nearby settlements. However, this advance comes at a cost. The division loses 10 valuable tanks, underlining the intensity of the conflict. As the days wear on, the toll becomes evident. By September 11th, the 24th Panzer Division's combat strength is significantly reduced, its ranks dwindling to 8,714 soldiers, a fraction of its nominal strength, and only 14 operational tanks left. In the late stages of September, the 24th Panzer Division becomes a central force in the fierce battle for Stalingrad. Hoth's 14th and 24th Panzer Divisions, along with the 94th Infantry Division, press forward toward the grain elevator and silo in the city's southern region. Amid the urban sprawl, significant industrial installations like the Lazar Chemical Plant, Krasny Oktyabr Steel Metalworks, Barakati Weapons Factory, and Stalingrad Tractor Factory become focal points of contention. On September 14th, General Major von Lenski assumes command of the 24th Panzer Division, succeeding the injured General Major Ritter von Hauenschild. Despite sustaining losses, Lenski notes the division still retains 50-60% of its combat strength, subordinated to General Commando Des 28. Panzer Corps within Hoth's 4th Panzer Army, the 24th Panzer Division continues its aggressive advance. By September 15th, the division's actions intensify. Battlegroup Edelsheim engages in a street-by-street -street struggle, fighting along the railway line, capturing key points, and connecting with battlegroup Hellermann. The brutal Rattenkrieg, or Stalingrad Academy of Street Fighting, unfolds as close-quarters combat engulfs the city's ruins. The battle's climax is reached on September 17th. The 24th Panzer Division faces resource challenges and reorganization. The 26th Panzer Grenadier Regiment reinforces other units at Mamayev Kurgan, defending against Soviet counterattacks. By September 24th, the division's strength is strained, with only 30 operational Panzers available. The 21st Panzer Grenadier Regiment replaces the 26th, adapting to evolving battle conditions. As September comes to a close, the 24th Panzer Division endures. Its forces consist of medium and average strength infantry battalions, along with a pioneer battalion. The battle for southern and central Stalingrad is declared mostly over, with attention shifting towards capturing worker settlements and industrial complexes in the north. The 24th Panzer Division advances close to Red October, threatening the Soviet 62nd Army. They penetrate tractor works but lose many Panzers, relying on infantry. Mamayev Kurgan battle stalls due to Soviet reinforcements. On September 29th, the 24th Panzer Division advances, aided by 389th Infantry Division and 100th Jaeger Division. The battle is brutal. The 24th Division is fighting with everything they have to make any gains. 
The LI Army Corps captures sectors of Red October and Barricady. Despite strain, the 24th Panzer Division covers six kilometers in two days. October 1st sees 24th Panzer Division directed by General Paulus to target Barricadi Hills for silicate factory access. October 3rd outlines combat strength, featuring Edelsheim and Winterfeld attack forces. By October 5th, depleted infantry within 24th Panzer Division fights on around key points spent infantry battalions in the 24th Panzer Division include 1 infantry battalion at 300. 400 soldiers, three completely worn out and drained, 300 soldiers or less, and only the Pioneer Battalion at average strength, 300, 400 soldiers. From October 14th to October 31st, the 24th Panzer Division shifts its focus to the city's industrial complexes. On October 14th, the weakened 24th Panzer Division, along with the 14th and 16th Panzer Divisions, targets the Barricade Weapon Factory. Concurrently, from October 16th to 18, the 24th Panzer Division edges towards the Barricade Factory's perimeter. They collaborate with the 21st Panzer Grenadier Regiment in attempts to eliminate an encircled Soviet unit. A combined force named Below, comprising the 24th Panzer Division and the 576th Infantry Regiment, launches a decisive offensive north of Barricade. By October 19th, the 24th Panzer Division's fighting capacity is severely compromised, with weakened infantry battalions. Soviet sniper activity, artillery strikes, and diseases lead to casualties. The division engages the gun factory's northeast corner, with combat group Below leading. Later in October, the 24th Panzer Division and combat group Below deploy north of Barricade to assist the 305th Infantry Division. Together, they counter Soviet resistance and secure the Volga's banks, facing challenges and dwindling tank numbers. Despite significant gains, the tractor factory and much of the industrial north captured. Strong Soviet resistance endures. On October 29th, von Lenski disregards orders to continue until complete Stalingrad capture. Since September 4th, the 24th Panzer Division significantly contributes to the city's conquest. November 1st introduces a new task, relieving the 79th Infantry Division in the southern Red October Steel Factory. Forming combat group Skiel, the 24th Panzer Division replaces Sobotka. The 26th Panzer Grenadier Regiment's commander takes over Panzer Grenadier units. Amidst the unforgiving winter of Stalingrad, the 24th Panzer Division found itself thrust into a series of harrowing battles that would test the limits of human endurance. The bitter cold, with temperatures plummeting to a bone-chilling minus 18 degrees Celsius, only served to heighten the brutal conditions the division's soldiers had to endure. In the face of this icy onslaught, the division braced itself for the relentless assaults that were to come. November 10th marked a pivotal moment as the Soviets launched a ferocious attack on Halle 10, a strategically crucial position. The 24th Panzer Division, in tandem with the 26th, found themselves confronted by a wave of Red Army soldiers penetrating the very floors of the factory. Against all odds, through massive determination and sheer grit, they managed to repel the assault. Their valor shone brightest on November 14th when the 24th, 21st, and 26th Panzer Grenadier regiments engaged in a brutal bout of hand-to-hand -hand combat, thwarting a fierce Russian offensive on Halle 10. Against the backdrop of the snow-covered landscape, the Grenadiers of Combat Group Scheel came to realize that their fate was intertwined with the grim confines of Stalingrad. The battles raged on relentlessly, and the 24th Panzer Division faced a dual-front struggle, both against the relentless enemy forces and their own internal challenges. The division's tanks roared through the city streets, engaging in close-quarters combat, while its soldiers found themselves encircled by the formidable Red Army on multiple fronts. The already dire situation took an even darker turn in December. The division's communication lines with the outside world faltered, and the supplies that were crucial for their survival ceased to arrive. Yet amidst the mounting adversity, the spirit of the troops endured. They celebrated a somber Christmas with the haunting melody of Still Nacht, Silent Night, echoing through the desolate radio waves, a poignant reminder of their isolation and struggle. The once mighty 24th Division stood on the precipice of collapse, its ranks decimated and its tanks reduced to mere remnants of their former power. The grim reality was that their arsenal was almost entirely depleted, 
rendering their once formidable tanks useless or immobile. The toll on their ranks was staggering, with a vast majority of their men having fallen in the relentless battles that had brought them to this dire juncture. What remained of the division was now but a shadow of its former self, a mere fraction of the force it once proudly represented. In this pivotal moment, time itself seemed to hang in the balance, each second laden with the weight of critical decisions. The nature of combat had metamorphosed into a ferocious struggle, unlike anything the division had ever faced. The Soviet forces, displaying an unyielding determination, surged forth with an unremitting onslaught. Wave after wave, they pressed forward, their unwavering assault pushing the 24th Division to the brink. The desperation within the division's ranks was palpable as the relentless Soviet advance pushed them to their limits. Tanks that had survived thus far now faced a harrowing reality. Ammunition had been fully expended, leaving them vulnerable and unarmed. Amidst the chaos of battle, the 24th Division found itself locked in a dire confrontation at the forefront. They stood resolute, confronting the colossal waves of Soviet reinforcements that seemed ceaseless in their assault. As this life-and-death struggle unfolded, the broader German division desperately fought to break free from the encirclement, attempting to escape the tightening noose of enemy forces. The contrast was stark, one group fighting tooth and nail to hold off the enemy's inexorable advance, while the other scrambled to extricate themselves from the encircling jaws of peril. In the midst of the chaos and carnage, the 24th Division's fate hung in the balance. Their resilience, tested to its utmost limits, defined the essence of their struggle, one that encapsulated the dire circumstances, the unrelenting onslaught, the tide of fate shifted in January as the encircled forces bore witness to the unyielding might of the Soviet offensive. Operation Uranus, a monumental strategic maneuver, was launched with the goal of ensnaring and weakening the German forces. The encirclement tightened with each passing day, leading to a desperate struggle for survival. As the final days of January approached, the division's destiny was sealed. On January 31st, the 24th Panzer Division was completely destroyed. Its remaining members surrendered, and the Sud Kessel and Central Pocket surrendered, marking the heart-wrenching end of a battle that had stretched agonizingly over five grueling months. And thus, we draw the curtain on our exploration, a poignant tribute to the extraordinary odyssey undertaken by the 24th Panzer Division, a division that carved its name into the annals of history through its determination amidst the relentless turmoil of Stalingrad. Before we part ways, we'd like to express our gratitude for your unwavering support. Remember to explore the links below, including our Patreon and Instagram, where we continue to craft engaging content. Your encouragement has been nothing short of amazing, and we are truly grateful for the community we've built together. With this, we eagerly anticipate the next opportunity to embark on a historical voyage alongside you. Until then, take care, stay curious, and may the stories of the past continue to illuminate our present. Thank you for joining us, and until we meet again.